Um, thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction and the invitation to be with you this morning. Um, I'm here if people are wondering. Um, it's quite nice to sit down rather than have to stand up. Um, can I just say in terms of my background, I am a member of the Environment, Food, Safety and Public Health Committee, but also a member of the Agriculture Committee. And my colleague Joe Linen will be here this afternoon on the environment side. But I will wear both hats because I think they're important for today's event. Um, I think this is really significant because it brings policymakers in contact with science and research and people who have um, definite and real information about issues which are perhaps explosive in terms of political consequences. So I think what you're about today is really important from our point of view as policymakers, and therefore it is useful that I'm here. And again, I appreciate the invitation to share some thoughts with you. It strikes me that prior to coming to the European Parliament in 2004, I was a journalist, just like our moderator today, and we had lots of um, airtime and many words uh, to write about food scares. In fact, they were the topic of my time in journalism. I would have reported extensively on the BSE crisis, which at the time, and I think it is useful to reflect on how serious that was uh, for the European Union, I think we sometimes forget what a crisis that was. Um, not just an economically significant crisis, which definitely was the case, but in terms of this shattering of consumer confidence in one single product and the consequences of that loss in confidence. And I think it shook the food industry from farm right through to consumer uh, to its core. Um, and it is rather unfortunate that we had to have a BSE crisis to make us aware of the fragility of the food chain, how everything is linked, um, how food and feed are uh, integral, and how the integrity of what we use in the food chain uh, must be secure, and we must have research to back up all of that. You will remember that the consequences of um, the BSE crisis in terms of human health um, was certainly quite alarming in terms of some of the predictions. Thankfully, that did not come to pass. But I think politically, and I wasn't a politician at the time, uh, those who were in, in power, if you like, both in member states, in the parliament, and indeed in commission, were very anxious to do something very, very uh, dramatic in order to address the crisis. And I think one of the most significant things that arose from the BSE crisis was the idea that we would have a food safety authority, an independent food safety authority based on research, science, innovation, knowledge, so that the entire food chain, whether you were a consumer or a producer or a manufacturer, would have access to knowledge uh, and information. And I know that the Commissioner David Byrne, an Irish Commissioner at the time, was hugely instrumental in this. And perhaps from a very um, selfish perspective as a, an Irish member um, of the European Parliament, um, we, Ireland is a major food exporting country. So it was, if you like, in our self-interest to ensure that our standards uh, and what we did in, term of, in terms of consumer confidence with our Food Safety Authority, which is still very, very effective uh, and works away on this issue, was uh, second to none, so that we had uh, in place standards, controls and systems that ensured the integrity of the food chain. And of course, we didn't just have BSE, we have had other crises. Um, Director General has just spoken in detail of some of them. And every time we've had a crisis, whether it was dioxin or E. coli, um, we're again uh, challenged uh, to, as to how we react to it and how we prevent it happening in the future. And I hope that um, some of the collaborative work that is happening here is about prevention, so that there are less political traumas, if you like, when we have a food crisis. I mean, the very recent one, to some extent, it is quite horrific that so many people died. Uh, and yet it is almost gone off the radar, other than for those who are trying to find the answer uh, to that problem. Maybe it is a sign that consumers in Europe are more reassured now about the systems we have in place 
in terms of dealing with the food crisis. If that is the case, that is positive. On the other hand, it is a shocking situation that in the European Union we would have had a food contamination crisis that killed so many people. Uh, and I know that there is still on work ongoing to uh, come to the, the cause of it. But let's deal with the um, issue that I've been asked to address specifically, which is ensuring food, uh, rather safe quality food is good for EU agribusiness and that investment in research is essential. But I think again the Director General has talked about the importance of research. I mean, safe food for an agribusiness point of view, it's not about a competitive advantage. It's a given. When we buy food, it, one of the ingredients in the food is that it's safe. There is a presumption of safety. Um, I'll just uh, recall my own background. We, we had a, a mixed farm, and I'm not ancient, but some of you will, will uh, know this story, that we used to produce all sorts of goods on the farm. We slaughtered poultry on the farm. We eviscerated it on the farm. We sold it from the farm. We didn't kill anyone. But it was a very different food chain. It was local, small, and therefore had less risks attached to it. It would be unthinkable that today uh, we would do the same thing. It, it just could not happen because of the food chain and globalization and um, therefore bringing with it many risks. Some people regret that we have come to that place. And perhaps in your discussion we will look at how do we satisfy the demands of those consumers who like the idea of less regulation, if you like, of the food chain, a more freedom of choice. And those in the agri-food business who absolutely need to be uh, able to say that what they sell is 100% safe. And there is going to be, I think, a conflict in those views, which is where the idea of having uh, preserving, enhancing and supporting an independent food safety authority is absolutely vital and it is the one area from a parliamentary point of view uh, that I think we need to be very clear about um, because as politicians there is a tendency to uh, say what you think and what you think may not be based on what is actually the facts of the situation and I think as policy makers it is beholden on us to know what is happening in research through uh, access to an independent uh, authority that gives us information based on sound science and research. Um, so for agribusiness, this is a very important conference. I think for consumers, they may never need to know that this is happening, but I think it's reassuring for them to know that this event is taking place, that after some years of collaboration uh, uh, with researchers across the European Union and beyond, that there will be technologies uh, that will be used in the food industry that will improve traceability, safety, quality, these important factors. Uh, and they're really interested in the outcomes. And I think that that's what uh, you're interested in too. Uh, and I'm very pleased that the emphasis now is just not on research for the sake of research, but it's on the transferring of the knowledge gained into practical application in order for Europe to meet all of these challenges that we have uh, so that we get a good uh, result for the money we spend. And I think the Parliament is keen on that. And I think publicly funded research, if I may make a statement, is something that uh, member states are perhaps doing less of. And I think it's important that Europe does more of it. Um, because one of the areas where I think consumers will lose confidence is if the research is not publicly funded and if a lot of research is in the hands of the private sector which is entirely valid if they do the research but the knowledge may not be transferred in a way which makes it accessible to all. Uh, so I do think there will always be a place for publicly funded research and again that's why in the, in the future budget the Parliament will be interested in that particular part of the story and in the application of research. And I think the points made about um, collaboration amongst researchers is, is really, really important uh, because it means that we will get a better outcome if we pool our knowledge and our resources. Uh, and that's what today is absolutely about as well. But can I make one perhaps controversial statement and then I'll wind up with, <laughs> if the moderator may. And maybe it's a question. 
I think in our desire um, as policymakers, as researchers, as those who are in the food industry to give guarantees and to protect ourselves and to make sure that what we do is 100% safe and meets all of these standards, are we neglecting the education of consumers about risk, about food? Um, are we neglecting explaining to children that if you put raw meat on top of cooked meat, you may have a problem? Um, are we taking away uh, that intrinsic knowledge that many of us of a certain age have from the next generation? If we are doing that, I think we are in danger. We do need to give people responsibility themselves and access to knowledge and information because I think it's, imp it's important to realise we cannot eliminate all risks with food. We will perhaps never get to that stage. So side by side with what's happening in this room, I do think we need to look at this other part of the story about consumers and their knowledge base about food. And dare I say to the two of us that are journalists in the room, or at least in the past, journalism has not perhaps helped educate consumers about food. Um, because if you read one, even on healthy diets, I'm fascinated to know what is a healthy diet because it changes by the day and by the newspaper. Um, so I think these are issues that, from a policymaker's point of view, we're going to have to address. We had a debate in Strasbourg last week about um, those diseases of diabetes and heart or whatever, that we need to do something about lifestyle diseases in a way, or you know, people, healthy choices would perhaps minimise them. And everyone was talking about we must do this for people, and, and two people made the intervention, two members, I was one that says, but we also need to allow people ha take responsibility, have knowledge, because knowledge is power. And indeed, as I say that, in this room, there's a huge bulk of knowledge. Um, on behalf of the Agriculture Committee and indeed the Environment Committee, I thank you for the work you do. A very unseen, most of it, uh, but the results do have an impact and I'm delighted indeed and if I may mention the researchers from Chagask in Ireland who contacted me and um, helped me be part of this, it's really important that we have more cross-contamination of politics and science and I mean that in the best possible way. So um, I wish you well with your work today and I look forward to hearing uh, much more of the outcomes. Thank you. Uh, Moray McGuinness, thank you very much indeed, and thank you for making a, a passing mention there of uh, practical application, implementation. Very frustrating for people doing uh, scientific research if the ideas pile up on the shelves and aren't really uh, manifest uh, in, in society. So, uh, Now, the good news about the, uh, the microphone at the podium is that it, uh, it will be working again, but there will be a minute's pause or so while the system is reset. So if you can just uh, contain your eagerness to hear the future presentations for one minute or so, thank you. Thank you. One, two. The system works again. Okay. So it was less than one minute. Okay.